Hello, vlog people. It is 8.30 in the morning. I've been up for about three and a half hours. Um, I still haven't showered. I haven't shaved. I haven't done anything. Um, but the Boo Boo Busters are coming in half an hour. These are the people that will make our house baby safe for Cooper because... I, crawling and walking are getting to be just right around the corner. However, it has been brought to my attention uh, that I've been very delinquent in doing Ask Sam's. Um, Michael Agostino has admonished me and slapped my wrist from afar, and so I am going to do some Ask Sam's right now. I'm going to get to it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just... Okay, and I'm going to... If I get distracted, I'll just chop and edit and put it all together. What are your views on UFOs and the possibility of extraterrestrial life? Well, this is from RTS-12A. Um, I think it would be very kind of small and ridiculous for, for me to think that in all of the galaxies, in all of the universes, when you look at it and you see all those stars with all those planets revolving around them, that we're the only life, that we're the only place that, um, you know, that the, the only carbon-based life form that came up in all of this mishmash. I don't think so. I think it would be kind of small for us to think that. So I'm going to say that there's definitely some other life out there. I don't know what form it is. I don't know if it's as cute and as smart as we are. But I hope to have contact with them, other than some of the people you meet on the street in New York who I swear are from another planet. Actually, several people told me I was from another planet in the same day. One person I knew and several complete strangers said, you know you're not from here. And I said, I know I'm from Oklahoma, which is considered another planet to some, but that's not what they meant. Anyway, okay. From Godsmack, 5001. What are your reasons you hate Bill O'Reilly? I don't hate Bill O'Reilly. I think he is a perfectly good form of entertainment. I think he can be dangerous, but kind of the joke's on him now, right? They're kind of pointless. They're the big losers. Um, I don't hate anyone. That's not true. I have great anger toward people. Hate is a strong word. I have strong dislike and anger toward anyone who... Uh, doesn't understand the larger picture of, of where I'd like for, to see the human race evolve. Anybody who's petty and small and justifies war and in, inequality. And I think Bill O'Reilly does that. And he's kind of smarmy. So that's what I think about that. Okay, this is from David uh, N. Jones. It's from Davy Jones. Sam, do you know the chemical content of clay in percents? Well, David, um, clay has two definitions. It either means particle size of any composition or it means part of the clay mineral group of phyllosilicates. Um, you need to specify the mineralogical composition of the clay before you can determine the chemical content. Or rather, once you know the mineralogical composition, you can estimate the chemical composition. So you need to be more specific. And um, I'll get back to you. For Sam, what... I am 19 years old, and ever since I graduated from high school last year, I've wanted to move to New York to pursue acting... But the problem is my mom. What do you think I should do to convince her that I am old enough to go? You're 19 years old. I'll tell you how do you convince her you're old enough to go. Get a job, save some money, and go. You're 19 years old. You're no longer a, a, a ward of your parents. You're no longer a minor. The way you convince someone you're responsible is by taking responsibility. You're not 15 and asking for you know some sort of permission. You're 19 years old. Save your money and go. What does that mean? Do you, by permission, do you mean... can? convince her to support this? I wouldn't work on that. I'd work on saying, you know what? I want this for myself. This is what I, I must do this. So I'm going to get a job. I'm going to save my money. And I'm going to go. By the way, living romantically poor at this age is good. Of course, everybody's poor now. Dream follower, what would your advice be as to how one dispels fear in the face of risk, in the face of the uncharted? What is the mindset to enliven the enthusiasm you hold? and the faith to face whatever may transpire. In other words, how do I keep a positive outlook in the face of risk? I think that can come from many things. Um, first of all, it's, it's knowing your truth. It's having a faith. It's knowing that there's something larger than myself. It's relying on other people who've, who've uh, trotted the path before me. It's knowing that anything uncharted is scary. Change is scary because we don't know what the other side is. But stagnation is even scarier. If I say no, I know what's going to happen. Nothing. If I say yes, I don't know what's going to happen, and that's scary, but it's a yes. So uh, right now, you know, there's a lot going on politically. We had a huge victory and a great defeat. And it angers me, and it upsets me to my core. Um, and I want change. So I have to put it out there, stay in action, convert my energy, my anger, 
and my want into positive action. Remember, change only comes when we are discontent. Nobody ever evolved or changed because everything was comfortable. We only change when things are uncomfortable. We only make progress, whether it's personal progress, whether it's something as, whether it's losing weight or getting a job or finding a relationship or leaving a relationship or whatever it is. We only change things when we are uncomfortable enough. That I think is why this country has been sitting uh, without m moving or evolving for so long. We've been kind of fat and happy while we keep printing up more money. And now uh, the pendulum has swung and we are suffering the consequences of that kind of lazy, complacent behavior. And we have to take responsibility. So we're starting to change as a country, clearly, evidently, as evidenced in the victory of Barack Obama. So in your own personal life, it's the exact same thing. When you're uncomfortable enough, you change. That's what motivates you through uncharted territory. Faith and change. What was uh, Sam? This is from Geese23. What was coming out to your family like? Um, rough. My father had issues with it. Uh, didn't understand it. Doesn't need to understand it, but didn't understand it. It was so foreign to him. I think he was afraid for me because he loved me and he didn't want me to be unhappy. His perspective of gay people was that they were miserable, lonely, unhappy people. Of course, now I have a marriage. I have a child. I experience pretty much no discrimination or prejudice in my life because I don't expect to meet it. Um, that is the truth of my life. Um, it ta it's taken my family, uh, that, that my father that time. Now, you know, my father was so happy about our marriage, loves Danny like a son, is the greatest grandfather. My mom accepted things more easily. I think uh, women's hearts are larger than their, than their uh, fear. Um, but I was embraced. I was never. I was never disowned or anything. Uh, it was scary for me. Of course, you know the problem with coming out is that you all. You know, it takes a person years and years to have the courage and strength to come out to friends and family, and then they expect everybody to just come on around. Well, okay, now I've told you everything should be all right. It doesn't work that way. It took you years to get there, and it takes people a while to get there as well. I think times are a little bit different now than when I came out. We have more positive icons and, and uh, examples of happiness and not like stereotypical crap. Um, if you're asking this on a personal level, what was it like? Please report your experience if uh, you're questioning it or you're getting ready to. Um, we're all behind you. Speak your truth. I just winked. I felt like Sarah Palin. You betcha. Um, uh, Sam, this is from Dorian Monroe. Do you maintain Oklahoma ties now? Was it hard uh, being in the belt buckle in the Bible belt when you launched your career? Ignorance is bliss. When I, yes, I maintain Oklahoma ties. I have friends there. I have family there. I go there to, to play in concert and to support causes and things that are important to me. Um, was it hard? I suppose it was. I felt a bit different. I guess everybody feels a bit different and alien in their own environment. Um, I left at a very, very early age. I left at 15. Um, to seek other people like me who wanted what I did. I really was driven. I really knew what I wanted. So I recognized that it wasn't going to be there. And I left with my parents' blessing. I think it was uh, harder for them than it was for me. I was just a stupid kid who just wanted to, to sing and act. Sam, do you feel, this is from Shastar, do you feel that a person should try something again after they have already failed twice? I feel like if you want something, then you should try it a million times if you fail. The great things that have been accomplished in this world, whether they be inventions, whether they be change, uh, must be tried and tried and tried and tried if at first you don't succeed. Right now, uh, there's a proposition that is looking to be overturned. You think we're giving up on this? Do you think I'm giving up on this? No. If something is in your heart, try it. If you find joy from something else or it becomes not as important to you, try to get out of the stuff. Sometimes we define ourselves by what we think we're supposed to be or what we think we're supposed to do. And then as we grow older, it's not the same anymore. We don't really want that. We don't really want to be that. We don't really want to do that. But that's our identity. That's who we think we're supposed to be. So we keep doing it like we're going to be a disappointment to somebody else or ourselves. If you've grown out of whatever that desire is, recognize it and move on. If you still have it in the same way, do not ever give up. Do not ever give up. Sam, from Cine Mexicano, why were you singing to four gazillion people in Central Park when you were a kid? I wasn't. I think this is a reference to a vlog that I did when I was in New York, and I pointed to a, 
a, a piece of architecture in the park, and I said, oh, I sang here to four gazillion people. I wasn't a kid. I was lived in New York. Maybe I said when I was a kid, meaning like I was in my 20s, but I wasn't. I was in my... I don't even know how old I was. I probably was seeing to four gazillion people in Central Park when I was a kid in my mind. This is from A.Y.L. Diva. What would it take for me to get you to sing a song with me in my show if it was when you were where you were at the time? A great deal of money or extraordinary sex. Hush Puppy Mix 2. Will we see a friend Friday with Jessica Stone? Yes, we will. Jessica Stone, that'll be a great friend Friday. Um, she's the greatest. She's a great actor. She's a great comedian. She's a great mom. She's my good, good friend. Uh, this is from my D and I can't even try. I got, I had got intimate with this girl. I made her cheat on her boyfriend. Now I don't know what to do. We've already gotten physical, so I assume that she, at the very least, likes me too. What should I do? Well, if she's with the boyfriend, I think you should uh, let her finish that relationship before you pursue this. I think you should talk to her. I don't think you should pursue a physical sexual relationship with her. I think you should say, you know what, until you're available and clean from this, then uh, I think we should not do this. You made a mistake, um, as people do, all the time, and forgive yourself for that. But uh, talk to her and say, look, if this, there's something here, then I'm going to wait till you're available. Don't make it messy. Don't other, uh, hurt other people. And uh, it, it can't end well if you create, create that kind of drama. Although sometimes it does. Sam from McChapel, what do you call on to get you through difficult times? I call on a power greater than myself, which I call God. I call upon my friends. I call upon my 12 steps. I call upon my friends within my 12 steps. I call upon Danny. I look into my child's eyes. I listen for that, that small voice that is the truth and try to, to act accordingly. I find that uh, peace and quiet will send me in the right direction, whereas chaos and fear will definitely not. I've learned to pause. That was me pausing, I was just showing you. Okay, how did you and Danny meet? We met on the road when we were doing uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamboat. <laughs> Coat. Dreamboat, I was the dreamboat. I was Joseph. Danny Jacobson was Dan Jacob's son. How's that? He played my brother. It's kind of incestuous. Sam from RTS 12 do you think Liza and Barbara Streisand will ever make good old-fashioned movie musicals again? Do you mean together? Absolutely not. Separately? Why not? Wouldn't that be great? Sam from Dear Jasmine, have you ever had jury duty? Uh, no, I've never actually had jury duty, but I've had to go in several times and be and wait and wait and wait and then let, be let go. Um, it helps that when I'm in jury duty being interviewed, I do an impersonation of Al Jolson in blackface, and they, I have never been chosen once. Okay, um, Sam, from Terry3210, is it legal for welfare to count child support as earned income? Legal? You'll have to talk to a lawyer. I'm sure this information is available on the website. Do I think it should? Absolutely not. No, I don't think it should. It's double taxed. The person that's coming from it has already been taxed on that money, and then paying it to someone else is going to be taxed again. If the family was together, it would only be taxed once. So, no, it is wrong, and I don't think that would be legal. From Mark Shires, why don't you put more cowbell in your music? You need more cowbell. It's, it's the age-old question, Mark. There should be more cowbell in everything. The question is, how much is enough? Not enough. There, I know there's not enough. How much is too much? I have never reached that level. It's something to investigate. Sherry Borden, what do you think about Clay Aiken coming out? Coming out of what? Retirement? What do you mean? Are you saying he's gay? No. Stop. I think it's great that Clay Aiken came out. He has a child. Um, I think it's great that Clay Aiken came out. I think a lot of people were waiting for him to come out, but people have to do things in their own way in their own time. Do you ever get a chance to hear him sing? I've never heard him sing live. I've heard him sing on television a couple of times. I know people who know him. He seems like a great guy. I think he's struggled with a lot of internal stuff coming from where he came from, being in the position that he was in. 
I am glad that he's come to peace with himself, and I am glad that he stands for a posi as a positive role model as a father and an artist um, and Mazel Tov play. Although you're from the South, you probably don't know from Mazel Tov. Okay, uh, Sam from Kathy, Connecticut. Do you use environmentally friendly, energy efficient products in your everyday life? Absolutely we do. We all bathe in the same water so as not to waste the water. I only sh and we only shower or bathe once every week. I'm wearing the same dirty clothes that I've been wearing for several, several days. And um, uh, I give Cooper like a spit bath. Yeah, we do actually. And they're everywhere. They're so easy. Even Target is selling environmentally friendly products. Boo Boo Busters are going to be here any minute. I'm very excited about Boo Boo Busters. And Sam, will you ever appear on American Idol? From Singer 333. Uh, 333. It's only half of 666. It's like you're half of the bark of the beast. Um, will you ever appear on American Idol? I don't know. I would love to appear on American Idol. Um, I guess. I don't know. I don't watch the show. To be honest, I don't watch the show. Um, but I, it's come up several times. I think in the beginning, I was getting a lot of press about you know, being asked when it first came up. But I'm, uh, I think they were trying to steer away from a Star Search person, from the Star Search person. Um, would I do it now? Um, probably. Um, yeah, why not? I would love to. I, if I haven't been asked. That's what it comes down to. And finally, from Jazz Fountain, I see how involved you are in overturning Proposition 8 in California. How is this affecting you? Uh, it's affecting me very deeply and very strongly, much deeper and stronger than I could have ever guessed. I don't know if you could smell my coffee breath, but I feel like it's bouncing even back from the screen at me, and it's offending me. So I, if, if this was smell vision you'd all have to be standing away from the computer. Um, this has affected me deeper than I could even have ever known. Perhaps it's because I'm a father. Um, I know this. If this is a religious issue, it should not be on a ballot. Separation of church and state. It is a legal issue. Um, I know this. Civil rights should not be on a ballot. Civil rights should not be on a ballot. Period. Um, as much progress as we are making, I believe this is like the last hurrah for a group of fundamental uh, extremists who must be superior to someone. Who... Uh, cannot believe that we have the situation in which Barack Obama has been elected, which reflects not only what we want in change for this country economically and, and all that stuff, but also just as a human being. Barack Obama represents what America used to be, which is equality and hope and promise about getting along with people, about not being better than, about working in tandem with, and that's what I want for all people of this country. The fact that I have personally become the uh, the victim of this movement is obviously uh, powerful but almost incidental. I like to hope and think that I would uh, have uh, responded the same way. I will march, I will talk, I will write. Uh, this is, could be the most important issue in my life. And I hope that it is one of the most important issues in yours. Whether you're gay or straight, it's a civil rights issue. And years from now, when you look at your children, your children's children, your friends, your family, your legacy, did you do the right thing? How proud must the people be, the white people, who marched with Martin Luther King against a popular vote? Do you want to be one of those people? Join me. Thanks for letting me go on about my Ask Sam's. Sorry I haven't done it in so long. This is like 20 minutes long. All right, take care. Do something wonderful for somebody. Wow, so many opportunities to do that. Pick one today.